guys, welcome to Theology Thursdays, where we answer your questions about God, faith, and culture. My name is Sarah, and we have Daniel back with us this week. I am it's back. Exciting, man. Yeah. Man, so Daniel had a big life event happen since he's been on the show last. So, I mean, you want to share? Yeah, this I mean, it wasn't a big deal, but big I mean, deal. I, I kind of got married recently. What? So this is crazy. Yeah, super yeah. Exciting. She got lucky. She finally tied me down, so she got lucky. Okay. I mean, it, it's still young. It's new. So we'll see. See how that goes. Uh, man, so I feel like you're the perfect person to answer this question today because it's a big question. Right. I feel like a lot of you are asking. And it's, how do I find my soulmate? So, I mean, mm, I think the first question, question um, along that is, I mean, is Jane your soulmate? Her name's Jane, by the way. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So... I'm going to answer that question, okay? He's hesitating. But, but I think I'm not hesitating, but I do think we need to clarify a little bit what the one or a soulmate hmm. means, okay? Um, so before I, I jump in, I also want to say that I'm answering this question from a Christian perspective, right? So, and the reason I'm saying this is because um, usually when I've heard this question, and this is a question that I've had as well, mm -hmm. it usually stems from, and it comes from this idea of how do I know when I found that the right person or the mm -hmm. person that God specifically made for me, right? And this also kind of comes with this idea that uh, that we're all part of our journey or part of the reason why you and I were created is that we're all on this journey um, to find that person that God made, that guy or girl that God made for, for me. And when we find this person, we are in a sense completed, right? There's a sense of us that's completed when we find this person. So um, as a Christian, I do think we'd first have to answer um, this first question, okay? And the, the question is, what were you and I, what were we made for? So Sarah, I'll, I'll, let me ask you this question. So if someone asks you that, how would you answer that? What were we made for? Gotcha. Well, I feel like I would take, I mean, this is Theology Thursday, so let's, theology, so let's Jesus juke the moment, which all of us would. Okay. Um, and so like Colossians 1.16 and John 1, three, they talk about Man, like we were created yeah. by God for him. Yeah. So, yeah. So, probably yeah. They're there. Yeah. So the Bible. Yeah. Good job, Sarah. Good job. So the Bible is very clear that uh, you and I were made for this fulfill. Well, that he put in us this longing for this fulfilling, eternal, awesome relationship. Right. And that the Bible is clear that we can only find that in God. So everything that you and I have, everything that we will experience, um, in a sense, supports that end. Right, that everything is 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 made to support our relationship with God, including relationships. So this is why often you'll see in the Bible or you hear Christians say that the reason God made marriage um, was to symbolize the love between Jesus and His church, or Jesus and us. Right. So, and you, if you want to know more about this, you can actually go to Ephesians chapter five, and you'll hear about this. So um, that, that's where you can find that. Yeah, so that's a, honestly, that's a great place to look. And I feel like that's something, so my husband's name is Gary, and that's something we talked about before, like right. really understanding that like our relationship wasn't as much for us as right. it was to reflect who Christ is um, and really what he's done for yeah, us. Yeah, so, and honestly, that's why I think this whole idea of soulmate or the one can be uh, both dangerous, but also paralyzing for some people mm -hmm. because it completely misses the mark and it twists um, the reason why you and I were created and made, mm -hmm. right? So again, we just said we were made for this perfect relationship and this relationship where we would be perfectly loved and we can only find that in God. Right. And what and what if people have found is that when you place that burden on a human being is that two things happen. One is you end up crushing that person under those expectations. Right. No but one two, can live up to yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, like no so one can sure. li live yeah. up to that. Or we find ourselves being disappointed and delusioned and we end up breaking up with that person. And right. I made that stupid mistake a lot in high school. But uh, another thing that I yeah. often say about this, and I get a lot of trouble joking around about this, is when you think about the idea of the one or soulmate, it really doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And it's because if you think about it, it hinges on the idea that I have to find, for first we have to find and marry the right person. Right. And I joke around, around about this because it only takes one person to completely screw that That's up. That's so true. It's like, yeah. what if they took my soul? Yeah, like, exactly. So it takes one person in history mm -hmm. to marry the wrong person. So now mm -hmm. two people are married to the wrong person, which means two other people will be married to the wrong person. So oh it really then doesn't they have make sense. kids and then there's everything. Yeah, so it up. really doesn't make sense. Right. 
Okay, so we've talked about all of this now, but I'm, I mean, I'm sure they're sitting there thinking, and they're like, well, crap, there's no soulmate, then what the heck do I do? Right, like, how yeah. do I know who to marry? Yeah, so to that, I would actually say two things. And, and I want you to hear me say this, Eunice. The first thing I would say is that this longing that you have in you to get married and this longing that you have in you uh, to find a person is a good thing, right? This is something that was given to you as a gift from God. He put that there. Um, And it was given to you as a gift for two reasons. One, it's an awesome thing to be able to find someone who's your best friend and that you get to spend the rest of your life with, right? Mm -hmm. But another reason why it's a gift is because like we said earlier, um, we get to show and we get to symbolize when we're married, um, the love of uh, the love between Jesus and his church. But the second thing that I would also say is that Although in the Bible, we don't find this idea of the one or a soulmate, or we never see that in the Bible. Something that we do see in the Bible is that God is into the details of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. So much so that uh, what we do find in the Bible is it says that he knows when we lay down, right? He knows when we stand up. He knows how many many hairs are. Are on our head. That's crazy. Yeah, that is, a lot. yeah that is crazy. So, wow, this is fitting, guys. My husband's calling. Oh, yeah. there you go. Here, Do, sorry, Gary. <laughs> yeah, well, but he can wait. He can wait. <laughs> but uh, he said, but he also really cares about who we get to marry. Right. And so I would say that when I found Jane, and now that we're married, I wouldn't say that uh, her and I were made specifically for each other, mm-hmm. um, but that God knew what I needed, what kind of person I needed, and He knew what kind of person she needed, and He led us to each other. Mm-hmm. So we don't complete or we don't fulfill one another, um, but he led us to each other. So that's, those are the two things that I would say. Cool. So hope that gives a lot of clarity, but I think big question that they're now all asking, not the soulmate thing, because you crushed that. Right. Um, so is she the one? Is she the one? I would say yes. It's so, still because she's watching, <laughs> I'm sure. So I, I would say she's the one only to the extent that we're married. Mm-hmm. Right. So something I've also heard is that uh, so when we got to face one another in front of all in front of all these people at our wedding and we said and we committed to one another saying, hey, we're going to spend the rest of our life. I'm um, doing life with each other no matter what happens at that moment when that happened, she became my one person. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and not not that she fulfills me and I'll never put that burden on her, but that I will try my best to love her as well as I can because she is my one person. So awesome. That was super sweet. I'm sure everyone's just awing right now. Like, that's so sweet. Man, well, thank you so much, guys. I hope that gives you a lot of clarity. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel so you get updates on new videos. And, man, leave your comments below for new questions, and we'll answer them. So, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you next week.